Yeah, g'day, and welcome back to this old lathe channel. Now I've been working on trying to get some motion out of this beautiful old Schaublin 125 CNC lathe, which I lobotomized from its original controller, and is now getting a Linux CNC controller. But I've had a few issues. One thing is my cross slide wasn't working. It turned out my problem with the x-axis was that I got disorientated in the SCSI connector, and I wired some of the pins back to front. So I desoldered it and made a new cable. The second issue I have is that my home switch has stopped working. I tested them extensively, they were working, now they're not, need to troubleshoot that. And then the last time I tried to power up the machine, I got an error message. So let's see if I can fix those issues and get the machine to do something. From the error message, the Mesa 7i83 card's not working. If the light doesn't turn on here, it means the card's not getting 24 volts. After checking it, I found this 24 volt DIN power supply. It was dead. Probably killed it when I did the wiring mistake the other day. Mail time! This is the new 24 volt power supply. Okay, it's powered up. Let's just check its output voltage before we connect anything. Okay, just over 24 volts. This looks good. Two different rails. Both have the same voltage. Good. So let's put the power back on and see if we've now got a functioning system. No power on this one now. What is happening to my 24 volt rail here? Problem is obviously in this uh, line number 61. So I better go looking for that short. Yeah, well there's definitely a short between 24 volts and ground. Now I'm just going to have to start disconnecting things and looking for it. Is the problem in the cable or in the connection of the cable into the driver because this is the driver which I blew up so it's definitely easily possible that it's uh, some sort of a driver side brain problem okay known good cable I've got light there that would imply that it is a cable problem And no light. So it's a cable problem. Since I made the cable, I can remake the cable. So that's a good thing. Okay, I think I found the problem. This is my 24 volt power line, which I had connected to this pin here. I've just desoldered it. It's supposed to be pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 should be the earth. 10, 11 should be the 24 volt. So I had that one leg over as well. I've just realized what an ugly job I did of this encoder wire as well. So let's fix that and move both of these two over one. All right, that's plugged back in. So let's try it out. Good one. Right, let's see if it's going to jog. Jogging X up, all right, X down, Z up, Z down. Cool, so I've got basic control now of both axes, so it's now I need to tune them. So I've got a little program running here. Let's start the program, going backwards and forwards. A big thank you to Walt from Holland who did a video call with me to help me with the basics of servo tuning. Thanks a lot. Now I've set up my oscilloscopes for each axis. So here I've got the, the Z axis at the top and the X axis at the bottom. They're just going backwards and forwards 10 millimeters at a pretty slow speed. I still have a bit of a following error when they change direction. Let's go in and just speed that up a bit. Let's call it a thousand. I'll just make sure I've got the 
scaling setup to go that fast. The output of the x-axis is good for 20 max velocity, 500 acceleration. And here I've got do the same for this one, 20, 20, and 500. Somewhere down here there's another one, max velocity 20, 500, save. So that means I'm going to need to reload my, reload everything, so I'll just save this. Save config xy health scope. Stop that, shut the machine down, just wait a second, reload, okay I'm neutral enough in the position like in zero, the axis, x, both axes there, I reload that program. Then go to Hellscope. Put my Hellscope over onto a different rolling auto normal. And I can go. Yeah, that's a bit faster. Enormous error on Y. Still need to work on that. Now I've got a joint one's got a forward following of point one and joint two has none. So let's give that a bit of that. 0 0.05 as a start. Test refresh. Save quit. Suck. Go back and start that again. Okay, that's dramatically reduced the amount of, uh, of forward following error there, but it's still not perfect. Oops, that's not what I want. I want the calibration of joint two. Let's up that a bit more and see if we can neutralize that down to. Oh wow, that's looking much better. So now we're getting, we've still got a wee bit of wee bit more. So it still has worse following error on reversals than the than the x-axis. Might have just I was doing with the scale of 10 yesterday. Let's stick with a consistent scale. Now let me see here, what have we got? We've got x-axis motion, z-axis motion, and the spindle under control. Hey, let's make something. I don't have any air on the machine at the moment, so this is my only manual chuck. Can't use collets. You know, it's been about a year and a half and thousands of euros, so I'm kind of excited to be get, getting to this point. Just take it easy, no hectic, no drama. Let's do a little simple turning and facing job and see what comes out. Unfortunately, this is the clock that I dropped, but hey, it's going to be good enough for centering up this stock.
Now, I'm gonna need some sort of a tool holder. I don't yet have the automatic tool changer set up. Luckily, there's this cutoff tool, rear tool post holder thing. This one needs a steel insert. It's currently got an aluminium insert. Okay, I've hit a soft limit because I still need to set up the home switches. Right, let's just do this the easy way. Just eyeballing that, that's way too high. I've already run this once to cut air, just to make sure. Oh shit. Just knocked that burr off. Not enough torque. Maybe the variator setting's wrong. So far I've done nothing about coding the variator control. So I'll just do this manually. Why is that not doing anything? I'm not sure what I've done, but I've got no variator control in the slow direction, so I'll just make a finer cut. Not again. Well, that was dumb. That tool holder, it's got no clearance, Clarence. Because I haven't got any air on, I wonder if I'm not fully engaged in the gearbox and I'm just dragging it around on friction. There we have it. It moves into axis and cuts metal, so it's a lathe again. Woohoo! I'm really happy to have uh, made a milestone this week. Obviously I've got some issue with the drive still and issues with everything else. I really appreciate your loyalty and following this project along. Especially a big shout out to Patreons and channel members. You really help make this possible. I really appreciate any assistance I can get. It's a pretty expensive project. It's a lot of time with the videos and stuff. So I'm just working on my next Patreon live stream. I think the topic's going to be, why do we abandon some projects? So if you're interested, please sign up for Patreon or join me on YouTube members. And if you'd just like to throw me a bone, I've got a link to uh, PayPal down below. Next week, I think I've got a real treat for you. It's going to be another machine review, but a metalworking machine. Not mine, but join me, you'll love it.